A police officer was going down the road when he happened to notice there was a guy who looked really uncomfortable and he looked out of it. And according to the police officer, here's where he stated quote unquote, he appeared very unsteady on his feet and his eyes were very bloodshot. And to me, I think it's crazy that the number one overall recruit in the nation could have a fall off this bad. Nearly 10 years ago, there was a player who was wreaking havoc all over high school football fields. As a matter of fact, let me give you some context here. Scouts were comparing him and saying that he was Ndamukong Su 2.0. Now, I can't speak for you, but I can speak for myself. When somebody compares another said person to Ndamukong Su, I take that seriously. Why do I take it seriously, you may ask? Because Ndamukong Su was one of the most unstoppable forces I've ever witnessed with my own two eyes. And at the time, his game, it backed up all the high praise because he was named National Defensive Player of the Year. But whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. I know what you're saying here saying, okay, Matt, just how good was he, though? Coming out of high school on a scale of 1 to 100, you know what his overall scout grade was? 101! Yes, that is right. You heard me correctly. On a scale of 1 to 100, scouts graded him at 101. If that doesn't tell you everything you need to know about him, I don't know it will. He literally, and I mean literally, broke the scale. To go on top of that, he was a five-star recruit and the, not one of, but the number one ranked player in America. I'm not talking about in his state, I'm not talking about for his set position, the number one overall player. And here's a fun fact for you, all time, we're talking about from all the recruits dating back to when they started keeping up with this stuff, he's ranked as the 27th best overall recruit coming out of high school in the history of the sport. Standing at a very respectable six foot two and a half, 313 pounds to be exact, there wasn't anything that was gonna stop this guy. Or at least, that's what we thought. Sadly, as much as I hate to say this, ever since his glory days of playing high school football, things haven't worked out exactly like he hoped they would. And realistically speaking, that's me sugarcoating it, this young man's downfall, I think it needs to be studied. You wanna talk about going from the highest of highs to the absolute lowest of lows? That's what happened here. This young man got mixed up in some, let's just say, not so good things, and also, eventually, he got to the point in his life and career where he started calling people out for rap battles. And when I was doing all my research for this video, gathering information, the one thing that continued to stump me and perplex me is there aren't any articles written about this guy whatsoever. And you would think the former number one overall player in the country who just had the hugest fall off arguably of all time, people talk about it, but that's not the case. Although there's not a lot of public information floating out there about this guy, he has left some trail marks. But even with that being said, there's still so many questions people have been asking about this guy even till this day. However, it all circles back to the one, and I mean the one big question we're gonna try to get to the bottom of in today's video. What really happened to Trenton Thompson? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hope all of you are having a great and fantastic day. If not, hope this video can make it a little bit better. A major shout out to Vic2 Productions 3314. As most of you know in these story videos, I say, hey, leave some recommendations down below on a certain situation or player you think is worthy of a story video. And VicTube said, Trent Thompson, five star defensive tackle, played at Georgia. And yeah, you know what happens next from there. I looked into it, thought it was an interesting story, and said, yep, it's worthy of a video, and here we are. Major shout out to Vic2 for the recommendation. And if you have any recommendations, please feel free to leave them down below because we made the videos that you guys want to see. And oh, yeah, I need to address this comment as well. This is one of the most liked comments. Matt, we need a video on a guy named Matt who tore both of his ACLs and is now a small YouTuber. When I tell y'all my life story, it could have been a movie. I mean it. And I really don't know if this comment's being serious or whatnot, but I've always told you guys the past couple of years, one day, I'll tell y'all my life story. I don't know exactly when we'll make that video on the channel, but I promise you, one day, it'll come, it'll happen. I just think right now I'm at a point where not enough people care about my life story, if that makes sense. Maybe we might make that video late in the summer, or maybe we even make it next summer, who knows. Oh yeah, I forgot to say this as well, Matt, throw this at the beginning of the video. YouTube, this is for educational and informational purposes only. That's all. Got to throw that in there to cover myself, but let's get back into it. I've jibber jabbered enough, though. You know the drill. You like the content, consider subscribing. Helps us out tremendously. But all right, Matt, blah, blah, blah. Shut the crap up. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. Good old Trent Thompson. Come on, man. You already know. To get into a story, we got to throw it all the way back 
to where things started. Mr. Trenton Thompson played his high school football in the state of Georgia, more specifically, Albany, Georgia, where he attended Westover High School. And this is where, as a junior, he went off. He had 83 total tackles with 12 sacks, and 38 out of those 83 tackles were for loss. Pretty good. His senior season was a carbon copy pace, and when I was watching his film dating all the way back to high school, the one thing I picked up on is he bull rushed everybody, and he was bigger, stronger, faster, more athletic than everybody else all of his competition and me personally i wouldn't label him as a finesse player he was just extremely athletic and he got off the ball quick and the fact that he had a grown man d1 body in high school he could just run over everybody so he didn't need those finesse moves whereas if you're a smaller guy in high school you got to rely on those finesse moves because you got to make up for being small in other categories. For Trenton Thompson, he didn't have to do that. He just relied on his athletic ability, instincts, and he dominated. And like we said in the intro, this earned him a 101 overall scout grade and the number one player ranking in the country. And of course, hindsight's 2020, but at the time, it made total sense. Nobody was arguing with it whatsoever. You watch this guy's film, you immediately thought, oh yeah, this guy, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with, not just at the collegiate level, but in the NFL one day. And I would say the reason he was so highly touted is due to the fact he had an uncanny ability to react quickly to the snap and jump off the ball. He wasn't just this big monstrous athlete where you just put out there and said, okay, be an athlete. No, he seemed to have some wittiness to him, I guess you shall say. It looked like he really knew the ins and outs about football and he knew how to get off blocks and all that good stuff. It goes without being said, every single college in the nation, they wanted him, but he wound up deciding to stay home and committing sign with the University of Georgia. This is where our story, though, starts to take a not so good turn for Trenton Thompson. Immediately when he got on campus at Georgia, everybody expected stardom. Everybody expected him to start since day one and dominate, go out there, play a couple of years, be an all-time great Georgia Bulldog and go to the NFL and make millions and millions of dollars. But for Thompson, he had a hard time even getting on the field at Georgia. And I'm going to throw this out there right now. We should all know why it's hard to get on the field at Georgia, even if you are the number one recruit coming out of high school. I get we're not talking about the current Georgia in 2024, but still back then, they had a decent team in defense. And in his first year of playing in 2015, his freshman year, he didn't play a lot and he only had 25 tackles and zero and a half sacks, or half a sack, I should say. But nobody thought too much of it. He's a young guy, defensive tackle. He's getting his feet wet. He'll be okay in the long run. Fast forward time into 2016, best season yet. And this is when I'd say arguably he lived up to the hype. He had 64 total tackles, ate up a ton of space. That doesn't show up in the stat sheet. And out of those 64 tackles, nearly 10 of those were for loss. Also, go ahead and throw in there, he had five sacks. And I can't emphasize this enough. It's not going to show up in the box score. You're not going to see it in articles. You're not going to see it in the paper, any of that. He was a space eater. That's the phrase I'm going to use, and you'd see it every now and then. Teams would double-team him, and other players for Georgia, they'd get a tackle for loss, or they'd get a sack. And although at this point in time, he's still not living up to all the Ndamukong Sue 2.0 hype, he was having a good season, and I'd say he was progressing relatively well. Had a solid season in 2016, he was going to come back for his junior year in 2017 and hopefully do even better. He just needed to continue to work hard, and the rest was going to take care of itself. Unfortunately... He hit a roadblock. After the 2016 season when they were doing spring practices, he had to be taken to the hospital. Actually, my bad. I believe this was right before they started doing spring practices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this was at the end of February in 2017. And at the time, it caught people off guard because the only information released to the public is that Trent Thompson was going to the hospital for a quote-unquote medical emergency. Eventually, some information about this case would come out and take a listen to this. A police officer was going down the road when he happened to notice there was a guy who looked really uncomfortable and he looked out of it. So the police officer, being the good civilian that he is, he went to check on the guy. You want to take a wild guess at who this guy was? It was Trenton Thompson. And according to the police officer, here's where he stated, quote unquote, he appeared very unsteady on his feet and his eyes were very bloodshot. So let me paint you a better picture here. Georgia's star defensive tackle, Trent Thompson, is pretty much walking in the road he's walking along the sidewalk he's just out of it almost like a zombie and that's how he wound up going to the hospital and they were very shady about all this because even to this day they have labeled it as a quote-unquote unspecified medical condition and after he got released from the hospital this is when he announced that he is stepping away from the school for the remainder of the semester so that right there put a halt on his career because he missed all the spring practices and he missed the off season he does eventually make it back in time for the season in 2017 and his numbers they took a huge decrease 
decrease. His tackles dropped from 64 to 38. His tackles for loss dropped from 9.5 to 3.5, and, and he had zero sacks that year. I have read what a lot of people have had to say about Trenton Thompson and his, I guess you'd say, fall off of a season in 2017, and most people try giving him the benefit of the doubt. I've seen a lot of Georgia fans say, yeah, well, his numbers aren't flashy, but he was good for us that year. Yeah, he didn't have any sacks, but that's because he was getting double teamed and other people were getting the sacks, like I stated earlier. And to a certain extent, I would agree with that, but not totally. Your stats and numbers year in and year out, in this case and scenario from 15, 16 to 17, they should always, at bare minimum, stay stagnant, if not increasing. So in 2017, if he would have had 64 tackles, nine and a half tackles for loss and five sacks, I wouldn't even think too much about it. I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. But since his numbers decreased in 2017, that's a red flag to me. And I'm not the best when it comes to evaluating defensive tackles, but here's what I can tell you about Trenton Thompson. There's nothing about him that stood out. Remember in high school how I went on a rant and tangent about everything that stood out to him about me? What, Georgia in that last season in 2017? Nothing about him flashed to me whatsoever. I mean, yeah, he was all right, don't get me wrong, don't get me twisted here, but that's all I was, all right. I've also seen some Georgia fans also state, I don't know how true this is, so do what you please with this information, that he was addicted to pain pills. The reason for that is because he got on them when he was battling some shoulder injuries. I looked into that for a couple of hours and I couldn't see anything else about that, so if you know anything about it, feel free to let us know in the comment section. But here's what I will tell you. I don't doubt it just due to the fact he was walking in the middle of the road, unconscious pretty much, and the police officer had to send him to the hospital. No sober person's doing that. And to go on top of that, why else, let's talk about this, would he have left Georgia for an entire semester? I'm not saying it was necessarily drug related, but you know, putting two and two together here, something was going on, something fishy. If I had to give you my best educated guess because we don't know, this isn't facts, I would say he was on some drugs or something. Maybe it was just pain pills, something as light as that, but here's what I do know, something was going on. And he took that semester off from Georgia, missed a lot of the off season. I mean, what did you think was gonna happen the following season? I don't care if you're the best thing since sliced bread. As a former athlete myself, I will tell you this, coming back from an injury and coming back from missed time, it's hard to get back up to game speed. It takes months in any sport. Well, baseball, not really, but I'm more so talking about basketball and football. And here's where things get even more mind boggling. After that, what I'm gonna label as abysmal junior season in 2017, he entered the NFL draft. The only thing I'm gonna say about that is he had to have some bad people in his corner. And I highly doubt that Kirby Smart gave him the green light on that and was pushing for him to go to the NFL draft because Kirby knew he wasn't gonna be even selected in the first or second or third round. And if you're not gonna get selected in the top three rounds, they always advocate for you to come back. I did also see a post from somebody who claimed to know the kid and stated that he hated school. So maybe that way into his decision, who knows? This person could be making this post up. So I would also take this with a grain of salt. But it doesn't matter why he left or why he declared for the NFL draft. The bottom line is he did it. And it turned out to be arguably one of the worst decisions he's ever made in his life because he went undrafted. Fortunately enough though, after going undrafted, he did get picked up as a free agent by the Cleveland Browns, but sure, Shortly after, not too long after whatsoever, they waived him. And no NFL team showed him any interest whatsoever, and he felt like he had no other choice but to leave the NFL, or not leave it, but not even pursue the NFL anymore, better way of saying it, and going to the AAF. So you gotta think about this. Within the span of three to four years, he went from the top prospect in the nation to now he's playing for the AAF. It's surreal how fast life can change for anybody, and that's why you gotta stay humble. As great as things are going for you and as great as things may seem, they can flip on you in an instance, and we've seen that here. Thompson wound up signing with the Arizona Hot Shots, what a name, and the Alliance of American Football League in January of 2019. This was a brief stint though, because the AAF did wind up shutting down in 2019 as well, so there's not too much to say for his career there. However though, right after that shutdown in May of 2019, this is where he signed with the Washington Valor of the Arena Football League. And check this out, he signed with the Arena Football League in May, and then he wound up joining the Canadian Football League in June. So he was only with the Arena Football League for a month, and this is where he signed with, <laughs> I can't believe this name, the Edmonton Eskimos of the Canadian Football League. Hold on one more time. We got to run that back. The Edmonton Eskimos. And there's nothing wrong with the name whatsoever. It's just 
laughable. It seems like a fake college name you'd make up or something. Anyways, though, continuing along here, check this out. So he signed with the Eskimos on June 6th of 2019, and they released him on June 9th. Good gosh almighty, you want to talk about being down bad. He got waived by the Eskimos within three days. He was on a three-day contract. Doesn't get too much worse than that. However, his career it continues to go on. In October 2019, still the same year, this is when he went into the XFL. And he wound up being selected by the Houston Roughnecks in the 2020 XFL draft, but he was waived by him because he didn't make the final roster. This is when he then decided to sign to an XFL practice squad team. And that didn't last too much longer either because the XFL, they wound up suspending operations, shutting down, whatever you want to call it. So this guy's football career, it has been bad. Very bad to say the least. He can't even stay on a practice squad in the Canadian Football League or the XFL or their Arena League. After the XFL though, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, they reached out to him and they signed him to the team. But tragically, you know where this is about to go. They released him in May of 2021. So... He's not even playing for any of these teams we're talking about. He's spending at max a month or two months with them. That's it. Fast forward time to September 2022. He signed with the Vegas Nighthawks of the Indoor Football League. Not the Arena Football League. I've never even heard of this before. The IFL. He signed with them in September and then in August of 2023, so nearly a year later, he was released. I have never heard of the Vegas Nighthawks of the Indoor Football League, so if you know anything about that, let us know in the comment section. And from everything I've seen, that was his last stint of playing football for now. But hold on! Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold your horses, partner. Story doesn't end quite just yet. Detective Matt being in the building was doing some more digging and research, and I couldn't find his Instagram, but... I did find a Twitter account. And what I found on this Twitter account was eye-opening, to say the least. I found this Twitter account where he has labeled himself as a defensive line coach at the Field of Dreams Sports Academy. I have no idea what the Field of Dreams Sports Academy is whatsoever. But here's what I did see. You had a couple of randos arguing on Twitter. They were Georgia fans, and here's what the first comment says. It's like we take three stars and turn them into beasts, and our Nolan Smiths, Trenton Thompson, and Isaac Nadas just don't flourish like they're supposed to. I don't know if it's from them not buying in or what. Am I wrong? Keep in mind... This random Georgia fan account that is writing this tweet and arguing with somebody else isn't even tagging Trenton Thompson. He's not even talking to him. But I guess Trenton Thompson somehow, somebody found the tweet and he replied to it. Who want it? You want to hit for star, lame as F. You mad you can't rap. Let's rap battle, call me. And he put his phone number and I'm obviously going to blur that out. Number one, I don't even know what kind of sentences you are. What is this sentence? You want to hit for star. I don't know what that is. And then the second part of this is, you mad you can't rap, let rap battle. Call me. <laughs> oh my goodness. This guy's off his rocker, man. What's going on? And then the Georgia fan wound up responding saying, I don't rap with a bunch of question marks. And that's the same response I probably would have had. Like, dude, what are you talking about? We're not even talking about rap. We're talking about football. Trent Thompson winds up replying to that tweet and says, let hit. I don't know what he means, and I'm not even going to try to decipher what that means. Those tweets, though, as you can see from the date, those are stemming back to 2021. And remember, the last update we had on him was he was playing for the Indoor Football League in 2023. And as of where it stands right now, there's no information about Trent Thompson anywhere. Nobody knows where he's at, and nobody knows what this man is doing. And to me, I think it's crazy that the number one overall recruit in the nation could have a fall off this bad. Let's address this though. Remember dating back to Georgia, police officer sees him walking in the middle of the road, pretty much unconscious. He seems out of it, so he sends him to the hospital. That happened, that was weird. He gets released from the hospital and he states, all right, I'm not going to Georgia for this entire semester. I'm taking some time off. Then you see tweets from him in 2021 where he's challenging Georgia fans to rap battles. Now I'm not a rocket scientist, but I think we can put two and two together here. This guy mentally, he's not all there. Something isn't right. And I don't know if he got hooked on drugs, then painkillers like people speculated, but something tragic happened in between that sophomore year at Georgia and before spring practices heading into his junior season. And I guess that also leads us into our million dollar question. Why didn't it work out? Why didn't he make it to the NFL? Why didn't he thrive and succeed? It's for everything we just talked about right then, there, and alone. Going off of everything I've seen, 
I don't think this was a talent problem. Sure, I'll be the first person to tell you at Georgia, here's what happened. People caught up to him. All those guys he was dominating at the high school level, they grew. They got older. They got bigger and stronger just like he was. And you could even go as far as saying he peaked as a senior in high school. I wouldn't be mad at that whatsoever, not to the slice of bits. But even at Georgia, we saw it. When he played in that first year and especially that second year, the sophomore year, and even his junior year, he was competing with the big boys. Sure, he didn't live up to the Nandamakan Sioux height, but this guy was not a bad player by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's a combination of he got into that sticky situation where he left Georgia due to maybe he got addicted to something, and also the fact that everybody else caught up to him in life. And it goes back to an infamous quote I say on this channel, your best ability is availability, especially for these athletes. And in all honesty, it's really a mystery. I mean, think about this. He couldn't even stay on a practice squad in the Canadian Football League. There is no way he wasn't talented enough to stay on a practice squad in the Canadian Football League. You can't convince me of that. I'm not buying it. Maybe, and this is just a maybe, I don't know. He didn't work as hard anymore. Who knows? It is a mystery. And I don't know, maybe we should throw him in the conversation as one of the biggest what-ifs of all time. There's many more things I could say. I'm extremely curious. Let me know your thoughts down below. But, uh, roll my day.